Okay, so this um, brings us to the topic of spiral arms, because all the spiral arms are, are locations where there are bright stars. There's stuff between the spiral arms, but the reason that we see them as bright blue um, features on a spiral galaxy is because they have a lot of stars within them. So um, one way that you might think spiral arms could form is by this idea of differential rotation. Differential just meaning that different parts of the galaxy rotate at different speeds. So we just, um, we've seen that the inner orbits of stars are faster. So things close to the center are moving quickly and things close to the exterior of the galaxy are moving slower. So it makes sense then that maybe as time passes, um, those stars that are within the outer reaches are basically getting left behind and the inner orbits are faster. And so over time, this basically um, smears out um, what would have been a clump of stars, I guess, into a spiral arm shape. So maybe that's how the spiral arms are formed. Um, and this seems reasonable, but it kind of depends on the time scale for how long it might take for that spiral arm formation process to happen. So um, for example, if you started with a bunch of stars in a line, that clump of stars that we saw in the previous slide, and then you let time pass, then over a, about 100 million years, you'd be okay. But if you continue for 500 million years um, or even billions of years, then you really run into a problem. Um, simulations show that based on how fast stars tend to move in a galaxy, um, you would completely wind up uh, the arms and they would be indistinguishable. You wouldn't see these very well-defined, clear, um, small number of individual arms. So um, this differential rotation cannot be the whole story. And if you're wondering about the time scale, the galaxy is on the order of the same age as the universe itself, which is about 13 and a half 13.8 billion years old. So 500 million is a pretty small number compared to the age of the galaxy. So this is a very serious problem. Uh, and so the differential rotation idea is not the whole story. All right, so here's our actual um, map of our Milky Way. And if we think about the evidence that we just saw in our activity, our theory of spiral arm formation has to explain a few different things. It has to explain why there are young stars and those red glowing star forming nebulae in the spiral arms. So it has to explain um, why the spiral arms seem to be young compared to other portions of the galaxy. And then our, our theory also need to, needs to explain why the spiral arms are persistent, why we can look back in, um, in time by looking farther in space and see spirals early and late in the age of the of the universe. So um, we see spirals, you know, nearby us like Andromeda, but we also see very distant spirals, meaning that there have been spiral galaxies um, for most of the of the history of the universe. So that means, I mean, presumably that could mean that they're persistent over time. I guess that it could also mean that sometimes a uh, galaxy develops spiral arms and then they get destroyed later. I guess that's another possibility but they seem to be a persistent feature. Okay, so um, there is a theory that your textbook does not name, um, but it has a name and it's called the spiral density wave theory for how spiral arms are formed and persist over time. And the analogy here is that there's a traffic jam. So let's say that your spiral arm is a traffic jam. And the idea is that in a traffic jam, individual cars don't stay in the high density area where the star cars are stopped or moving slowly. Eventually they pass through. So stars are basically like the cars in this analogy. Um, they can reach an area of high density where there's lots of gas and stars. They kind of get stuck um, due to the gravity of the other stars and the, and the gas, but eventually they pass through that traffic jam. So the individual stars are moving in and out of, the, of what we would think of as the spiral arm feature over time. So the individual elements of the spiral arm are not consistent, they change over time. But the overall pattern, that persists. All right, so I'm gonna try to make this a little bit more clear by showing you an animation. So the idea here is that you've got some high density gas region. So you can just think of this as like a thick area of gas. Right, 
Um, so out here, the gas is thin out here and in this area, it's, it's thicker region, high density region. And so if your star is coming into your high density region, then as it enters the dense region, it slows down. So this is like a car in a traffic jam and it moves slowly while it's in the spiral arm. And then it can move quickly as it leaves the other side of the traffic jam. So that's what a star would do. Let's say instead we have a gas cloud coming into our high density region. As our gas cloud comes in, then it causes the, um, that gas cloud to condense. So the interaction, it's basically like if you have two clouds crashing together, right? Um, it's going to cause some of the gas to become higher density. And so as that happens, it's gonna form even higher density regions and those collapse into stars. So stars are being formed then as a, a gas cloud enters the high density region. And then as the, the gas cloud continues to pass through the high density region, more and more stars get made as more and more of the gas cloud is collapsing into stars. Some of these stars will start to die quickly. So blue stars are short-lived. So the blue stars die out first. And as they you know, go supernova, then we have mostly red stars that make it out of the other side of the traffic jam intact. So this is no good in our traffic jam analogy. There's, I mean, no one that, well, hopefully no one dies in a traffic jam, right? In the traffic jam, all the cars make it out, but in the spiral density, um, or sorry, the density wave theory, the blue stars would die out before they make it out. Okay. So that's the, that's the theory. And how does that actually compare to the evidence we see? Well, um, we do see that there are lots of blue stars in the arms, right? And fewer blue stars between the arms. So that seems reasonable. Um, and if you look closely at many spiral galaxies, it seems that the stars in front of the spiral arms are older and redder. And so the spiral density theory seems to connect with that evidence pretty well. Uh, you can't really see that in this image. You need to take a much more detailed look. Um, but in general, this theory does explain why we see the blue and red regions in our spiral arms. All right, so that spiral density wave theory explains how the arms persist over time, but it doesn't really explain where did that initial high density region come from in the first place, right? I just started with that high density region, but I didn't say how it started. So there's lots of ideas where how that could be. Um, it could be that the bar shape of the Milky Way's bulge causes some asymmetry in uh, the gravitational influence on the gas in the disk. And so that um, triggers the spiral density wave to form. Um, it could be that gas near the bulge is unstable and that causes dense regions to form. And then those propagate via the differential rotation model. Um, it could be that there's gravity from our galaxy's companions, the small Magellanic clouds and large Magellanic clouds. Maybe those gravitational interactions cause the spiral structure to get set up in the first place. Um, could be collisions with other galaxies. It could be supernovas that cause density fluctuations. But your textbook thinks that it's molecular clouds that basically on their, just because of their large size, a molecular cloud is just a very large, cold, dense uh, cloud of gas, that on their own, just because they're large and massive, that they um, tend to gravitationally attract more of the low density gas around them. And so this um, gravitational attraction can set up the spiral density wave, and then that causes the spiral arms to persist with the young stars and the emission nebulae that we see. So um, that is a leading hypothesis. This is also the one that was pretty much discussed in the crash course video. Um, and Galaxy Zoo data, the same type of data that you used in a couple labs back, those were actually used in a paper used to test the hypothesis. So this seems to be like a promising way to explain how the Milky Way spiral arms formed. But this is definitely an area that is still in progress.